Um, what I will talk to you about is what we do at uh, DTU Nanotech, and specifically in, uh, in a group in which I work in, which is the uh, polymer nanofabrication uh, group uh, uh, regarding lab on a chip uh, applications. What uh, I will talk about uh, are several lab on a chip applications of, of, that you see uh, um, here in, in, in the first slide. Uh, but I also will also uh, talk about in more or less intensively about the fabrication of the, of the chips, uh, which is meant to be for, for large scale fabrication, uh, uh, in, uh, all in polymer, uh, and all the chips are all in polymer. Uh, first, I will start with a brief introduction of, the, of, of uh, myself and of the Institute, and then uh, we'll talk about the multi-layer fabrication for, for, the, for the polymer chips, and then I will speak in detail about the applications. First of all, Denmark, uh, it's a country from which I come from, a country in Northern Europe, of course, known for the scientifically major, major majority for, for Niels Bohr and for the School of Copenhagen, but also for less, let's say, less dedicated, less physical or scientific things like the mermaid or the castle in Helsingor or the, where Hamlet is, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, depicted, and then other, even more, uh, let's say, amusing things like beer or, or Lego bricks. Um, now to the Technical University of Denmark, uh, where I come from. Uh, I actually uh, work in, in DTU uh, Lundby, which is the one in, in the Aero, which is near to Copenhagen, but uh, DTU is actually spread uh, uh, all over Denmark, and it has several is various institutes but uh, 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 all over the country, but the main, let's say, the main campus is situated in, uh, in Lyngby. Uh, now to DTU Nanotech, that is the institute for which I work. Uh, it, was, it was first uh, established in the 1990 uh, with the name of Microelectronics Center. Of course, at the time, everything that went was micro or nano was uh, linked to microelectronics. And then after uh, uh, becoming a department of DTU in 2003, uh, it now employs uh, 190 scientists, uh, uh, approximately, it has approximately 80 PhD students. And uh, the, 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 it is a quite uh, international institute uh, considering the fact that uh, 50, about 50% 50 of the scientists are non-Danish and 10% 10 of, 10 of which is also Italian, specifically. So there's a huge Italian colony in, in, uh, <laughs> in Denmark. Um, so now, uh, just a few moments to talk about the, our clean room facility, uh, uh, Danchip, uh, which uh, was established in 1993. Uh, it now has over 1,300 square meters of state-of-the-art clean room facilities that includes uh, all different kinds of lithographic equipment or, or a lot of a lot of. Uh, um, a lot of dedicated equipment. Uh, we, in principle, we are able, at Danchip, we're able to manufacture uh, several kinds of materials, going from silicon to polymer, uh, and recently also carbon. Uh, now, brief introduction about lab on chips. Uh, I took this slide from, uh, for this picture from, uh, from an old uh, review. It was quite optimistic in the sense that the, the review actually uh, was considering that in 2010 we will have would have all these sort of uh, uh, wonderful uh, uh, applications, which most of which are actually uh, uh, at, uh, being uh, um, being studied at uh, research level. But unluckily, there are not many uh, there are not many uh, uh, things applications that go to the market. Uh, one of these is the is the, is the, 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 the patch that you see uh, in the in the picture. Uh, this is brought through the years, although there are not many, uh, uh, there are not many um, uh, things available on the market. It, it has brought great improvements in terms of materials and material patterning, which is still, uh, uh, still fundamental for, 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 for the, the, the past and also the future applications. So just, this is a slide just to say this is uh, that the number of actually uh, uh, present uh, 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 systems available on the market is pretty limited. As you can see here, this is the, this is the number. You have between around 15, more or less. And it's, it's not a big number, considering the number of, of, uh, of things in research that are actually aimed toward this, 
towards these applications, but still there's uh, there's a there's a lot uh, there's a lot to to do at this uh, this purpose. So, what do we what would we want for uh, to be our lab on chip? In, ge in general, we want something very nice, small, portable, that maybe has a cartridge that we can put in and just use once and then throw it away. Uh, and this is the optimal. There are some of these things on the market, but what is the majority of things right now uh, 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 that we have? It's something like this. We have this very nice chip, but in order to make this chip work, we have to interface it with the potentiostat, for example, for the recording of, uh, uh, of uh, electric signal. Or, and then we also need to make the fluid flow. We have also have micro, uh, we also have uh, syringe pumps that we need to inject the fluid with. So, and then, in order to see, the, for example, the attachment of the cells in the chip, we need a microscope. And in the end, we also need a computer to interface the data and to, to be able to, uh, to, to get our results. So in the end, we have a chip in a lab. We don't have a lab on a chip. So what we need to do is to reduce, <laughs> we need to reduce all these, uh, all these uh, make all these things uh, on a chip, which is not always trivial, of course. Because what we, we need to consider is that other than the active area on which we, the majority of times we focus our attention on, which is, of course, the main, the main part, we also have the transducers we have to consider. We have, we have to transfer the fluid. We have to pump. We have the electronics that needs, that needs to detect and to transfer the data. We need uh, trans data transferred and evaluate the data on, on chip. And we have to display, which is not, which is, also, a very important thing, especially uh, when one needs to, to make these sort of uh, uh, systems available to people that are not trained uh, uh, to, to, be, uh, to evaluate the data. So these are all very important things that we need to consider. So what are the other, there are, but are there also, over, the, over than this, there are also other things that we need to consider if we want to spread this sort of technology. We, that we have some time needed for development because once we have the proof of concept, it's not always straightforward that we have the things right there ready. Uh, on average, it means it can, it can take from three to five years to, to, have, to go from a proof of concept to a product. Uh, another thing that the systems are sometimes, as I said before, very complex. Uh, they need to several, several uh, parts. And also sometimes there's, uh, there's ethic issues uh, related to, 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 the, to, the, to, the, to the experiments. Uh, I, I think of, uh, I'm thinking of, of, of uh, stem cell, for example, in Italy. What is one of the issues, for example? Uh, and uh, uh, also uh, the patient compliance is one of the most important things to take, consider because, you know, patients always want to, to have something that is not too invasive, but yes. So this is also another uh, thing that needs to be taken into account. So the idea is we need to keep things as simple as we can. So we don't need to, uh, we don't need to go uh, too into, into complex, too many complex uh, systems. Uh, so in, uh, with uh, wanting to spread the, 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 the fabrication and make these parts available to the large quantity of people, uh, why use polymers? Well, polymers are in principle uh, 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 in, used in a large quantity of applications. They're easy to fabricate. They're, they have, polymers have different chemical and physical uh, 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 properties. And as, as I said before, they can, they can be manufactured in, in, in many different ways. So uh, this is, f to, to, to go towards large number, the idea is that we need to get something, to have something that is uh, relatively easy to fabricate, that is cheap, and that is, is, can be fabricated in large number. A few words about the injection molding. Uh, the technique uh, is a, a standard technique. The majority of things that are made in polymer today are fabricated with this technique from toys to, as I showed before, uh, a lot of appliances and, and things of common use. Uh, the, the technique is, is uh, simply uh, injecting a, a, a quantity of molten polymer inside a cavity. Uh, uh, and then uh, in which there is inserted this, this nickel plate that I talked about before uh, we fabricate and which has, enables us to fabricate the micro and nanostructures. While on the other side of the cavity, we have a, 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 an insert that has, uh, uh, um, uh, is machined with the standard uh, 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 macro machining techniques 
uh, that uh, allows us to, uh, in, uh, to couple uh, to the micro and nano uh, fabricated part, uh, a part in which uh, that is used for the connection, external connections of the, to the, of the fluids to the chip. Uh, in principle, this technique can be used with different kind of polymers. Uh, the, ki the polymer that we prefer using, that we're using right now for the majority of the applications at DTU in our group is, is uh, the TOC, the TOPA COC. The reason for which we chose this, this, uh, this polymer is that it, it has a very high, relatively high glass transition temperature, which means that it allows thermal treatment of samples after the, 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 the chip is, is assembled. And also, it's, it's, it's because it's resistant to many chemicals that are used in, in, in biochemistry, and uh, including, uh, is also resistant to acetone that is used to pro for processing, it's very useful for processing. So these are the, the, mainly, the main reasons for, for the choice of this, of this polymer. Uh, brief, uh, brief just, just, uh, just one slide on the fabrication, uh, for the, of the fabrication of the, nic of the nickel stamp. Uh, which is made by uh, spin coating a thin layer of, of uh, photosensitive polymer on a, on a silicon substrate. Then the, 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 the resist is patterned by UV lithography, and then uh, it's used, uh, the resist is used as a mask for uh, a removal of uh, reactive, bioreactive ion etching of, of the silicon. It, this is in case, the, in case there is uh, multiple layers that need to be fabricated on the chip, we also have further lithographic steps uh, that allow, for example, multiple, multiple level. Uh, when the, 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 the silicon chip is patterned uh, uh, in the end, uh, there is a, a phase of sputtering with a, with a conductive layer that's generally nickel vanadium or chromium gold uh, that is then used to, uh, as a seed layer for electroplating the, the, the nickel. Uh, which is actually the shim, uh, uh, the, the stamp that we need. In order to have the final, uh, the final stamp, we just need to remove the, the silicon by etching in KOH. Uh, these are some examples of the structures that we have fabricated. Uh, the replication quality is, 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 is rather good, as you can see in, the, in, the, in, this, um, in this figure here, where you can see that the black, uh, line is the is the is the first uh, silicon uh, part, and then on the of course the negative part is in nickel, is the blue is the blue one, and then the red one is the final polymer part. So the accuracy is for these sort of systems is pretty high. In particular, here you can see a, 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 a slit that is uh, uh, 20 microns in width and has 100 only 100 nanometers in height. Um, <coughs> Uh, after the fabrication of the single chips, we actually bond the chips. Uh, uh, it's a simple, very simple thermal bonding of the chips. Uh, that is uh, the only thing that we do uh, uh, more of, uh, other than, than uh, pressing the chip with and, and heating it is uh, uh, um, enhancing the, 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 the strength by, by uh, treatment of the surfaces with the UV radiation before the surfaces that come into contact. Uh, we, we have uh, bonded uh, top lids of several thicknesses uh, between 100 microns and 2 millimeters. Um, what we haven't actually done full characterization for the thicker lids, but for the thinner ones, the, which are the less resistant, we could reach a maximum pressure of, a, of nine atmospheres for, for a 100 micron thick uh, topos, topos lid. Now a few words about the applications. That um, but one of the major that we have in our group is the DNA elongation and sequencing. Uh, why would we, do we want to do this uh, uh, elongation of the DNA? Because in order to, to, uh, uh, to see uh, the barcoding, to do the barcoding of the DNA molecule uh, uh, through, through stretching, uh, it is possible to, uh, to uh, as the De Grenier theory says, to get uh, 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 this is a measure, actually the measure length and is a function of course of the affective length by multiplied by a factor that it depends on the elongation and of course the, 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 the more the, the, the elongation is, is possible 
the more, the more we reach the effective length uh, respect to the, the measured ones. The, 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 the measured length is more near to the, to the effective one. Um, and this is done by inserting uh, the, the, the DNA strands inside, inside a, a nano channel like the one that I showed before, the nano slit. Um, with this sort of technique, we have a theoretical resolution that is about 100. It is given by the, 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 by, by the light, the fluorescent light that we use for detection. That is about 100 uh, base pairs. Um, and so what we do in principle is we spot the, the, the content of GC uh, area, high GC areas versus high AT areas by either a specific staining or degradation, uh, thermal degradation. So there are many people that actually work here with DNA. So I think the first question is why do you do this? Because we already have base pair resolution in principle. So why do you need 100 base pair resolution when you can have single base pair? Well, sometimes the answer could be that sometimes base pair resolution is not always needed because sometimes, especially as far as I know for human, uh, uh, matching is, 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 is very much the technique that is used. Uh, because, for example, for a single uh, base pair, uh, for base pair resolution, PCR is required, which is time consuming in principle. Uh, and in case of long strands, uh, uh, one would lose the repetition after PCR because PCR, of course, uh, uh, has needs uh, to, 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 is needed to, to cut the, the DNA into, into single areas. Uh, moreover, the, the, what, what uh, this, this inserting the DNA in nanochannels gives the possibility of doing parallel sequencing in multi, in many different channels, as you can see here, and uh, uh, gives the possibility of sequencing very long, uh, mega, uh, very long uh, strands of uh, length. We have actually uh, inserted a one that is up to one mega base pair up to now. Okay, so. What do we do is ins we insert our, our DNA. Uh, first, we stain. Uh, this, there, are, there are two methods with which we, we, can, uh, we can actually uh, uh, do this um, mapping. Is one is counter staining, uh, with which we simply uh, uh, stain the, the, the DNA strand with a, a specific, either a specific ligand that uh, binds either to the high GC areas or to the I80 areas and then stain the rest of the molecule with fluorescent molecule yo-yo. Uh, with, with, uh, with this method, we can simply under the, with optical microscopy, after elongating the DNA in the, in the channels, we can, uh, we can actually uh, see the, the, the map the, 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 the different areas. And with this technique, we were able to, uh, to obtain a, 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 um, a resolution of, of uh, two kilobits per that depends on the elongation that we are able to, um, to get uh, of the inside the nano channels. Uh, so this is the results of the technique. Of course, there's a, the, there's been a, there's a, the mapping is done considering uh, the, the drift that there is inside the nano channels that you can see uh, here versus time. Of course, there's a, there's a drift of the, of the molecule Taking care of the drift of, 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 the, of the molecule, there's a pretty accurate mapping of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the strand. Uh, there is a slight uh, difference in, 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 uh, in, uh, in, um, in quantity. That's, pr that's due, in principle, to the background that is always difficult to, <laughs> to eliminate, even if you're in very dark laboratories. It's sometimes not that easy to... <laughs> to <laughs> To eliminate the background fully, but you can see qualitatively the, the if not quantitatively, the, the the curves match pretty pretty nicely. So we're very happy of, of this uh, of this sort of result. Uh, this was done in nano channels, which had had a dimensions that were uh, depth that were about 100 nanometers uh, deep and like 400 nanometers wide. But uh, uh, wanting to, um, to uh, uh, denaturate uh, uh, and uh, elongate uh, uh, long, longer DNA strands, we decided to use slits instead of, instead of nanochannels because it's of its uh, fact that it were more easy to, 
to insert the DNA, long DNA strands. The difficulty was in fabrication because, as it, some of you may understand, to bond chips that have 100 nanometer height and 20 microns in width is not that easy, but we managed to do that. Um, so yes, and and uh, um, we after being able after making uh, the chip, which is uh, like a cross in which we insert the DNA on one side by suction, and then on the other two sides of the cross after the insertion, we are able to to by inserting flow on the two sides, we're able to stabilize and stretch the DNA strand even more during while during the the, the, the measurement. With this kind of, uh, of technique, we were able to obtain the elongation of the strand that was about 95% uh, against the, the 60 of the previous technique. Uh, I don't have any data right now uh, on, on, on available on the mapping, but this is the, actually the, the, the first, um, one of the first uh, um, DNA strands that was inserted. So the, we have a PhD student that is now working on this, on the, on this, and he's doing, uh, he's doing the mapping. Of course, there's a problem due to the fact that we don't have microscope objective is not that. So we have to anyhow, there's see there's stitching that needs to be performed because the the area, of course, the the field of view is not is not as big as we would want. But uh, we think that this is a very nice result. It's very promising too for the. For the for the for the detection and, and, the, and the mapping. Another application is maybe going on bigger things is cell electroporation. Um, the idea is that behind it is that uh, if uh, wanting to uh, insert, uh, for example, uh, from chemicals to DNA strands to to uh, uh, other kinds maybe proteins or. Th uh, uh, things that we might we might want to uh, insert into a child in order either to study it or to for drug delivery purposes, for example, uh, we would want we want to uh, make the uh, the membrane of the cell more more porous, and we do that by uh, applying a, a, an electric signal to to the to the um, to the cell, and uh, uh, thus. Uh, reaching a threshold voltage over which the cell becomes uh, opens pores and, 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 and is able to to accept uh, 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 the quantities of, 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 uh, of uh, things that want to be delivered. So the idea is that uh, the, the threshold for for a membrane for a cell is usually between 500 millivolts and a volt. So in order to to obtain that, we need to change mouse doesn't work. We need to change the applied external fields uh, uh, on, 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 the, on, the, on the cell and also, of course, need to consider the radius, the, the dimension of, of, the, cells, of, the, of the cells. And, and these are the two main parameters that need to be tuned in order to, 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 to be able to, to perform the electroporation. Um, in order to do that, we fabricated a chip that is all in polymer. Uh, we used uh, 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 an um, electroactive polymer that's called p dot tosylate, which we were able, which we used to pattern some electrodes uh, uh, inside the chip. This, you can see, is the final chip uh, that was made. Um, and and this p dot is very is very nice because it's although it's a polymer, we can uh, by by uh, uh, putting a uh, by putting a, a net, during the fabrication, by putting a net di distance between the p dot and the tosylate ion, we are actually able then afterwards to, to, uh, to, make, it, to make it conductive. Uh, um, and and it's, it's, also, it's also, from the microfabrication point of view, it's very nice because it's, it's, it's perfectly compatible for, with, uh, uh, with uh, microfabrication techniques. It can be spin coated and then patterned with, uh, with, we actually patterned with the RIE afterwards. So. It's, it's, it is very nice to, to use, and we use it very, very intensely. Uh, so this, here's a, uh, an example of what, what we, of the cell electroporation. What we, what we have here is like two p-dot electrodes and uh, over which uh, that were on the substrate, and on top we have 
digital micro nanofabricated uh, uh, chip in which we have an opening here that is about 50 microns in which we, the cells go through. Of course, by applying an external field uh, 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 of, of, of uh, 50 volt uh, uh, in AC current because uh, uh, DC would, would destroy the, the, the polymers, the electrodes, but AC current is more than enough. Uh, we are able to, 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 uh, uh, to create uh, an, an electric field of high intensity inside the, the constriction and then uh, electroporate the cells. Uh, with this te technique, we are able to deliver fluorescent molecules, uh, fluorescent uh, uh, um, molecules to, uh, to, uh, to PC PC12 cells in order of the, uh, and, could, and could have a, a very big enhancement with, with the, with uh, higher, of course, depending on the voltage. With 30 volts, we have only about 10% enhancement. Instead, with 50 volts, we have a much, much bigger enhancement. Uh, another application that is uh, very, uh, very uh, interesting for us in our groups is the uh, detection of neurotransmitters. When uh, a neurotransmit, when, uh, for example, when a neuron uh, wants to connect to, to exchange information with another, uh, with another neuron, it does it by uh, means of uh, neurotransmitters, by delivering neurotransmitters inside, uh, in, inside the uh, environment, which are then detected by the, 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 the other neuron. And this sort of technique is the one that is mainly used for for uh, cure of uh, neurodegenerative uh, diseases such as Alzheimer or, for example, Parkinson's. So the interesting thing is that actually the neurotransmitter can uh, oxidize on, a, on an electrode and can be detected. So uh, in principle, what we do is we, uh, we are able to have, uh, uh, this is actually previous study with the, the chip is not exactly in hard polymer, but this is PDMS. This is a proof of concept that allowed us to, to see that, that actually there's oxidation of the, of the, of the, of the dopamine. Uh, in particular, this is the neurotransmitter that we were targeting on the, on the, uh, on the PDOT chip, on the PDOT uh, uh, electrode. Um, and uh, this, this, first, uh, this first result was then uh, uh, obtained, uh, of course, the sti the, having several stimulations. Uh, the more the stimulations, the more uh, in time, the more it is difficult for the cells to recharge, of course. Uh, 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 the higher the number of stimulation, the lower the signal will be, and this is more or less what we expected from, from this sort of, of detection. This interesting result was then used to do some studies on the on the on 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 drug uh, uh, on drug uh, release of uh, on drug affection of, on neurotransmitters, what we have here is like we have in, in principle uh, 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 cells like the ones you saw before on the electrode, in we, we, in a low where uh, in a low potassium buffer, then uh, a high uh, Potassium buffer is inserted, which is makes the cells uh, 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 exert the, uh, secrete the, the neurotransmitters. And then, in one case, there's there's a, another low potassium buffer is inserted, and then a high potassium buffer another is inserted again in order to have two peaks. And in one case, the the between these two emissions, between these two high potassium. Uh, um, uh, uh, buffers, we, uh, we input some L-DOPA, which is a, a, a substance actually used to stimulate the, the, the secretion of, of neurotransmitters. And if you can see the percentage of intensities between the first and second peak, if we don't have L-DOPA, of course the second peak we expect in principle to be lower because the secretion of neurotransmitters will be smaller, uh, and which this is what actually happens. But if we insert uh, L-DOPA for five minutes, uh, we actually have the same secretion level as the first one, which means that uh, the L-DOPA is actually very effective in, 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 the, in, the, in the enhancing the secretion of the neurotransmitters. Last but not least, the uh, application that we worked on 
is uh, patch clamping. Um, the idea is that there are uh, on on a cell, uh, on cells, on human cells, there are uh, a certain amount of proteins, surface proteins that uh, uh, that allow the the, the flow of uh, ions through the through the membrane, and uh, and these uh, these proteins can be either uh, uh, stimulated or open, let's say, by uh, by uh, attachment of another ligand, uh, maybe in a chemical uh, chemical way or by application of, of a voltage. Um, these, these proteins, some of these proteins are very, very used because uh, they're so-called so ion channels. Uh, uh, they're, they're very much studied because as uh, a large, large majority, a large quantity of known diseases uh, is actually uh, linked to the dysfunctions that there are in these, uh, in these uh, channels, communication channels in these uh, ion channels. So uh, it's, it's, it's um, it's a subject that is very much studied. Uh, in principle, what we had, uh, yes, what we had, uh, th this project was uh, done in collaboration with a, with a company called Sofion that actually fabricates uh, uh, and sells a machine that is, uh, uh, does uh, automated on-chip patch clamping for, uh, for an analysis purpose. So the, te the, the technique is, uh, this is the standard technique. Then, uh, the, in, in principle, uh, the idea is that one needs to, with the, the, with the traditional method, needs to, uh, on, under the microscope, needs to see, uh, take a cell and with a, with a glass micropipette uh, 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 apply a suction and be able to, to uh, have uh, a leak current resistance uh, in this area of, of uh, one gigahome because of, or more, because the idea is that uh, we need to uh, have the current, uh, the only current that we need to detect needs the, to be the one that, that has to go through the cell. So after that, we can open, uh, we can uh, actually open the cell on, on one side and, and then uh, apply, by applying voltage, we simply measure the, the, the quantity of, of ions, we measure the current and thus the quantity of ions that goes through the cell. This is with the standard technique, but of course with the pipette, it's not actually automated. So the idea is to do this all on automated chips. Uh, there's actually is, uh, uh, this is the, 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 the machine that is actually, uh, is actually used for, 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 this, for this purpose. Uh, and the idea is that uh, is to, to have this in a much more automated way and to, to have a, a process that can be used by, uh, even by a person that is not exactly trained to, to do for for in, in the detail uh, uh, of, of of the of the of the technology. So, and with this sort of thing, you can the the, the idea is that you can have a, a hundredfold higher throughput than with a manual way under the microscope. So, uh, with what Simon said, this I will conclude. Uh, I've talked about the platform for fabrication of all polymer lab on chips that we have at uh, DTO Nanotech, and in particular in my group. Uh, I've talked about some applications that regard DNA sensing or electrochemistry. Uh, we, um, the, as uh, future work, the, the, we will perform optimization of electrochemical measurements specifically uh, uh, regarding the, the, the detection of neurotransmitters on chip. And uh, we also working on new, other than the, the present uh, 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 detection system. We also work on neon chip uh, uh, detection, like uh, optical or acoustic, like optical, like the one you see in, in, in the figure. And with this, I would like to thank all my uh, colleagues at the Polymer Micro Nano Fabrication Group in, 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 uh, in Lumbu. Of course, the Polynano Consortium, that is the consortium of the project for which uh, uh, I am hired, and of course, the funding agencies. One last, uh, one last thing. Oops. If any of you might be interested, we have this very nice Polynano Summer School that in which we actually, uh, it's a, it's a three weeks course in which we actually teach the students both uh, uh, the fabrication and the electrochemical applications of the, of the, of the, that we do at, at, uh, at D2. We have, a, they have, they split into groups. They had four different projects this year they had to, they had to go through. If any of you are interested, you, either, you can either ask me or go. It's, I know it's not that clear to, on, the, on, the, on, the, 
uh, Polynano website. And this, oh, oops, this doesn't work. Okay, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer.